My name is Svetlana Brzev, and in this tutorial I am going to discuss uh, earthquake resistant confined masonry construction. This photograph shows a building, a ma confined masonry building, uh, which uh, performed uh, really well in the 2007 Pisco Peru earthquake, which was a magnitude 8. And uh, you can see that it is um, a G plus 4 uh, building, and uh, the, uh, the neighboring uh, buildings, which were of uh, masonry construction, but unreinforced masonry and some reinforced concrete buildings collapsed. After a major earthquake like this one, uh, engineers and others um, often ask a question, what, what makes one building stand and the other collapse in an earthquake? What are the features, what are the key features or characteristics of an earthquake safe or earthquake resistant building? When it comes to confined masonry, there are several considerations that need to be um, taken into account uh, when uh, planning and designing a confined masonry building. Uh, for example, uh, spacing of uh, tie columns and the layout of tie columns, these are reinforced concrete confining elements, uh, is very important. Uh, also, uh, spacing of tie beams and uh, location of tie beams, which are usually at the uh, floor and roof level, is also very important. And um, uh, similarly, there are some rules related to the height, wall height, and also wall thickness. Um, some of these consider some of these uh, requirements, uh, or many of these requirements, are included in the codes and of the countries where confined masonry has been practiced, and in the guidelines, various guidelines, uh, which will be mentioned in the resources section of these uh, tutorials. Uh, key considerations that will be discussed in this tutorial are wall density, reinforced concrete tie columns, uh, masonry walls, and toothing at the uh, tie column to wall interface. Wall density is considered to be one of the key indicators of seismic safety of a confined masonry building, and this has been uh, proven in uh, several earthquakes, particularly in Latin America, where Researchers have uh, studied wall density of buildings that performed well and the ones that were uh, more significantly damaged. Uh, wall density can be defined um, as the uh, amount of walls in one direction of the building relative to a planned area, and it is usually expressed in terms of wall density index, D. So D is defined as uh, uh, the area of walls, AW, which is uh, for uh, one direction of seismic loading, like this one, is the total cross-sectional area of all walls that are uh, acting in, uh, or are laid in one direction, uh, divided by the total plan area of a building, of a floor plan of a building, uh, which is uh, this value, it can be calculated relatively in a simple manner, and it is expressed in percents, this percentage value. Uh, this needs to be uh, done in both directions of seismic loading. Uh, uh, wall density needs to be determined for both directions. So uh, on an example of, um, of uh, an actual building for seismic loading acting in uh, this direction, we would consider a total area of um, the blue shaded walls and um, divide them by the total floor area of this particular um, building. It's relatively easy to determine. Whereas for the other direction of seismic loading, we would need to determine the area of the walls in the other direction and divide them by um, by the total plan area, which is the same in both cases. In that way, we would obtain the value of uh, wall density. And uh, you can see that only confined walls have been taken into account. If there are any unconfined walls, they wouldn't be taken into account for wall density calculations. In general, this, per, this uh, uh, indicator is used for, uh, can be used for regular buildings, which are rectangular, plan, or square in shape and with regular wall layout, but it is it can be used for a slightly regular building as an indicator. So required wall density for a particular building 
de depends on the following parameters. First of all, it depends on the seismic zone uh, of where the building is located, um, such as zones 3, 4, 5 in India. Depends on the building uh, height, which is number of stories, and the weight, uh, and masonry strength. Uh, this means uh, type of masonry units, whether there are bricks, and if there are bricks of which, uh, what is the compressive strength, and also the type of mortar, um, is it uh, like a lime mortar, lime cement mortar, or mud mortar. And for all these cases, this can be determined uh, using uh, simple calculations. Uh, however, uh, a regular, a general rule for wall density could be that uh, it, the order of magnitude would be uh, for D value is 1 to 2 percent per floor. So at the minimum, a single story building should have 1 percent uh, wall density uh, at the base level, and the two story building should have 2 percent at the base level, and uh, the number could increase if uh, masonry strength is lower and if building um, uh, uh, and if seismic zone is higher. So those are the key parameters. Reinforced concrete tie columns are critical components of a confined masonry building. Uh, we would like to achieve a good, uh, good performance of, uh, of this, uh, these elements and to uh, prevent, if possible, their failure in an earthquake. This photograph shows uh, a reinforced a confined masonry wall with tie columns which, uh, which uh, failed at the top and bottom locations due to a uh, shearing failure of um, confined masonry wall. And uh, one reason for their failure was that they were not properly reinforced. Uh, the proper enforcement of uh, tie columns requires um, uh, closely spaced ties at the top and bottom, in top and bottom regions of tie columns at approximately, if the height of tie columns is age, at approximately one fifth or one sixth of the of the overall floor height, and uh, this closer spacing of, of of ties is needed in high seismic zones, for example, zone five of India. And it is not necessarily required in um, lower seismic zones. Usually, the spacing of ties is on the order of 200 millimeters, 20 centimeters. This similar uh, closer spacing is required at the opening locations because the type of cracks that are expected are uh, going to the uh, bottom of the opening. Uh, this photograph shows an example of well-constructed, well-built uh, tie column, and you can see uh, ties, a typical tie in a tie column, and uh, here is an example of uh, uh, detail of uh, how a tie should be uh, anchored, how should it be bent? It is like a loop with uh, what we call it is 135 degree uh, angle which, um, uh, which uh, prevents opening of the ties in, uh, in case of an earthquake and uh, a loss of um, uh, capacity and strength in a tie column. Uh, quality of masonry is uh, essential for a good seismic performance of any masonry construction, including confined masonry. Uh, this includes uh, quality of uh, masonry or strength of masonry units, types of units, uh, quality of mortar, and then quality of masonry construction. Uh, this photograph shows um, a confined masonry building, uh, typical of Haiti. Uh, and this type of construction was affected by the 2010 earthquake of magnitude 7 which killed 300,000 people. So one of the key reasons for a uh, very, very high uh, death toll in the earthquake was poor performance or poor strength of masonry construction there. So it can be seen very clearly that masonry construction is poor. This was done using uh, very, uh, very low strength uh, uh, concrete blocks. Uh, even quality of concrete construction in tie columns is uh, extremely poor. So um, this type of construction cannot perform well and uh, cannot be expected to perform well in, in earthquakes. On the other hand, uh, you can see a photograph of a confined masonry wall under construction at uh, IIT Gandhinagar uh, campus uh, in Gujarat. 
uh, and um, this uh, construction is done using uh, fly ash bricks uh, which are uh, produced in a plant and they're of uh, uh, reasonably high strength and uh, mortar strength is uh, uh, using a cement lime mortar and quality of masonry uh, construction is also good uh, where joints are uh, mortar joints are of uh, 10 millimeter th thickness uh, were uh, followed in this construction. Uh, it is very important to wet the bricks before the construction and it was done at this site. Um, this uh, will have also good implications on performance of masonry in earthquakes. So in terms of the masonry units, uh, bricks or uh, blocks, uh, strength of these units is very important as mentioned before. This is an example of rural uh, clay bricks. We can see the bricks are of uh, irregular shape um, and um, they're, they're often of uh, very uh, low strength, compressive strength, which is one of the key indicators of um, uh, performance in earthquakes and uh, this strength could be on the order of 20 kilograms per centimeter square to 30 kilograms, which is lower than what the codes prescribe. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you can see um, fly ash bricks, which were used for uh, IIT Gandhinagar uh, site, and they're of um, high strength, of regular shape, and produced in, um, in a plant. Uh, so um, it is expected that performance of masonry uh, using this type of units is going to be much better in an earthquake. Good bonding between uh, masonry walls and uh, adjacent tie columns is essential for uh, satisfactory earthquake performance of a confined masonry building. Uh, bonding can be achieved by toothing at the wall to tie column interface. Uh, toothing is uh, accomplished by uh, leaving um, exposed uh, faces of the bricks uh, at, uh, at the interface on each side of the wall and interface with tie columns. Usually, uh, this uh, can be achieved by having at least a 5 cm uh, expose, exposure of some, uh, some bricks, uh, uh, whereas the others are set uh, back, back. And um, it is very important to fill uh, the, uh, all the gaps and uh, the complete area in, um, inside the, um, the toothed interface with, uh, with concrete in order to avoid corrosion and um, uh, uh, inadequate performance. Uh, this is an example of tooting uh, at the interface of uh, uh, masonry walls and an interior tie column. And this example is from the IIT Gandhinagar campus construction in, uh, um, in Gujarat. And uh, this is an example from the same uh, construction but showing um, um, intersecting walls and uh, uh, tooting at, at uh, the intersection of uh, two uh, combined masonry walls. Uh, to summarize uh, this tutorial, uh, it is very important for a confined masonry wall or a confined masonry building to achieve a wall density of 1 to 2 percent per floor. Um, it is very important to have a proper uh, reinforcement and detailing of tie columns um, and particularly ties in terms of their spacing and uh, anchorage. Um, good quality of masonry walls is essential for uh, satisfactory performance of any masonry uh, construction including confined masonry and in case of confined masonry tooting at the wall to tie column interface is also critical for ensuring bonding um, between uh, those two components.